Now for the most important part, the dessert portion of the hearing, I would like to welcome Mr. Uh, Rich uh, Draper, CEO of the Ice Cream Club, uh, Boynton Beach, Florida, testifying on behalf of the International Dairy Foods Association. Mr. Draper, you will have five minutes to present your oral testimony. Please uh, speak into the microphone make sure it's on. Thank you. Ranking Member Velasco, as members of the committee, and especially my Congressman Alan West from Florida's 22nd District, who is so committed to small business. Sorry I didn't bring any samples today, and if I'm invited back, I will. Uh, I also want to recognize the International Dairy Foods Association, the leading voice of the dairy industry, for their help with today's hearing. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention my wife and business partner, Heather, who is with me today. Uh, just briefly, Heather and I have been married recently, two and a half years ago, first marriage for both of us. She's a former executive in the banking industry. So I feel I've done my part to move the economy forward by adding her tremendous talents to the manufacturing industry and also removing one from the banking industry. Right. <laughs> a brief description of my company, the Ice Cream Club. In 1982, a buddy of mine, Tom Jackson, and myself opened up an ice cream shop in a little town called Manalpan in South Florida near Palm Beach. Uh, those were the good old days when you could just come across an opportunity and pack up and go. We started making ice cream in the back of the store and shortly thereafter began wholesaling. Today we produce over 120 award-winning flavors and are known for our crazy mouth-watering varieties, but we only produce in three-gallon tubs so we're not available in grocery stores. We supply 500 food service accounts throughout the Southeast and Caribbean. About 7% seven, about 7 of our business is export and that percentage is growing. We now employ over 50 people and operate from an 18,000 square foot factory and we continue to grow. In fact, this year we've hired seven new staff members. We still have our original store and my partner Tom is still with the company. We deal with regulations and, and local, with local, state, and federal levels by multiple agencies who are very interested in today's hearing topic. We fully support the efforts of this committee to ensure that federal agencies make regulations as, efficiency, as efficient and as least burdensome as possible for small business. Let me touch briefly on some items of concern for the Ice Cream Club. There is nothing more important to the success of our business than the confidence our customers have in the safety and quality of our products. We welcome government regulation and inspection when it is utilized as a partnership between industry and government to further enhance the safety of food production. However, we are worried about duplicative regulatory agencies at various levels of government. For example, we are, expect, we are inspected regularly by the Florida Department of Agriculture, part of the USDA. Also, we are inspected by the FDA. We have four major inspections by the Florida Department of Agriculture each year, as well as numerous other visits to collect samples and calibrate equipment. The new food safety law passed by Congress last year calls for even more inspections for food manufacturers, so it will be particularly important that the FDA utilize existing inspections in the dairy industry as much as possible. We are concerned that instead of targeting increased inspection to high-risk areas, FDA will take a one-size-fits-all approach over the entire food sector. We hope that there is not an adversarial gotcha approach coming down the pike. Our view is that the vast majority of food producers adhere to strict food safety procedures and are working very hard to provide safe, quality, consistent products to the public. Recently, the FDA began targeting certain segments of the dairy industry for extra environmental testing. FDA's process can take anywhere from a few days to more than a month to get test results back. During that time, businesses have, have to hold product in inventory and production lines may have to be slowed down until FDA results confirm that products are safe to be shipped. These additional inspections are slow and response by the FDA make the cost of doing business higher for small business and the FDA should be required to determine if these extra costs can be avoided. Another example of one size does not fit all is when we try to sell to the government. For example, if we wanted to sell to a VA hospital, we have several roadblocks potentially in our way. One is the size of the bid. They may require all fluid, including ice cream and, and milk. We only do ice cream. It could be a geographical boundary, say the entire eastern United States, we only uh, supply the southeast. That also goes against the bi-local movement, which has benefits. Plus, we'd be subjected to additional USDA inspections. We make over 20 flavors of no-sugar-added ice cream. I'm not aware of any other company that does. I think that'd be a great addition to a VA hospital. We'd just like the opportunity to be able to go in and say, we're meeting all other regulations. Let us have a shot. Uh, since milk is the primary, I'm going to move ahead in just a second. Here. Finally, I would like to suggest more involvement by small business at the inception of regulations. Uh, this could be accomplished by a small committee of business people such as myself that could offer input not as a way to get a competitive advantage or take shortcuts, just smart input from people on the front line. Uh, in conclusion, I want to say that I feel very fortunate that we're operating 
in a country that allows us to grow our business. Um, much of the world's population is under an oppressive regime of some sort, so we can't complain too much, so we will take reasonable regulations over the alternative. Thank you very much.